Okay, now let's do the next sum of working capital. We already have done one sum. Let's try the next sum of working capital. This I'm doing sum number 2 on page 285. Let's read the sum guys. Uh, a company has a level of activity of 36,000 units per annum. So the total units are given to you as the total units are given to you as 36,000 units per annum. First thing you need to do is convert this into per month. How will you convert this into per month? By dividing dividing this by 12. So this is going to be 3,000 units per month percentage CPU per month. Let's see the sum. They gave you the cost structure. Raw material per unit is given to you as 5 rupees. Direct labor is given to you as 3 rupees. And overheads is given to you as 2 rupees. Right? How do I get per month figure? CPU into per month units will give you per month figure. This into this gives you this. So 5 threes are 15. 3 twos are 3 threes are 9 and 3 twos are 6. Right? Next, selling price per unit is given to you as 12. First thing you do is make this much part of the working note done. Once this is done, you start with the fair work. Let's read the adjustment and move on to the fair work people. Raw material will remain in stock for one month. Raw material we found out, guys, raw material we found out is 15,000. 15,000 for one month. So this is going to be 15,000. Fine, do we get this in here? Next, processing time is nil. Processing time is nil, that means my work in progress is nil. Next, finished goods remain in stock for two months. So finished goods is 15,000 into two, 9,000 into two, 6,000 into 2. So this is going to be 30,000, 18,000 and 12,000. So this comes out to 60,000. Right? Let's move on ahead. They have given you that credit allowed to suppliers of raw material is one month. Creditors is here. Raw material guys is 15,000 so this is going to be 15,000 into 1 so that is going to be 15,000 rupees right let's move on ahead credit allowed to debtors is 2 months now let's move here debtors debtors as I had explained to you in the previous sum is calculated by using this formula selling price per unit how do I get selling price per unit? Selling price per unit is given up here. Selling price per unit is 12 rupees into total units. Total units per annum is 36,000 into debtors period is given to you as 2 months divided by 12 months. So this is going to be 72,000 rupees. Fine, let's leave this here. I'll just show you this once again. Guys, formula, selling price per unit. This is my selling price per unit. Into total units. This is the total units, 36,000. Debtors period is given to you in the sum divided by total period. In a year, there are 12 months. Okay, let's move on ahead people. Let's leave this here for the timing. The company intends to maintain a cash in hand and bank equal to 1 month raw material, 2 month labor and 3 month overheads. This you will have to make a working note for this. Cash in hand specifically they have told you is to be equal to 1 month raw material. So raw material we know raw material is 15,000. So this is 15,000 into 1. So that's going to be 15,000. 1 month raw material, 2 months labor. Labor we found out is 9,000. 2 months labor. So that is going to be 18,000. 
right? And three months overheads. Overheads, we have found out overheads to be 6,000. So 6,000 into three, that is 18,000. 51,000 right so your cash in hand is going to be 51,000 in this sum they have particularly told you that this is how cash in hand has to be calculated let's write this figure here people cash in hand cash balance required cash in hand is 51,000 right next 20 percent of the sales are for cash like I explained to you in the previous sum if 20% of the sales are for cash, that means my debtors are going to be 80%. If 20% of the sales are for cash, that means debtors are going to be 80%. Right? This is 8 to the 16, carry over 1, 7 is of 56, 57. So 57,600, debtors is going to be 57,600 which I am going to write here 57,600 debtors next uh, the sum does not have any time lag or advance so there is no advance paid to supplier there is no time lag so this 15,000 will come out here as it is now all you need to do is add these figures subtract 15,000 from it and that will give you your net working capital right so all you have to do is add 15,000, 60,000, 57,600 and 51,000 that will give you gross working capital from that you subtract 15,000 that will give you net working capital I leave this addition for you all to do on your own right this finishes the sum thank you